Hi there, it's Keith. Hoping you're well today. Thank you for joining me on this session on uh, setting goals for yourself and your clients. Now, um, one thing you often think about is very often you're geared up to setting goals for your clients, help them get particular results. Um, but with today, we're also putting some focus on thinking about setting goals for yourself. Maybe you do it quite a bit. Maybe you could do it a bit more. But uh, what I'm going to be doing over the next 35 to 45 minutes on this particular session is get you to think about both areas. What I've done is as well, I've set the session up in such a way that there are clear areas that are geared up towards yourself as a personal trainer, but there's also areas that are geared up in terms of helping the clients. One of the things that you'll definitely notice when you're going through this session is that the sections are interchangeable. So there might be messages that you're taking on board in terms of help your clients, but what you'll also see is you'll be able to take that information and use it to put it into situations for yourself and vice versa. Well, that's the aim of the session anyway. Um, so that's what we're going to be covering today. But what I'm going to do is, um, rather than me babbling, I'm going to get the screen share going and uh, we will begin and start working through our topics today. Okay, so here we go. Let's just get this up and here we are. Ready, steady, and there we go. So it's good, yeah. Setting goals for yourself and your clients, that's what we're going to be working through today. So 35 to 45 minutes. Um, what I've done uh, with this particular session is there's going to be four sections that we cover today. And at the end of each of those sections, what you'll see is there is a section review. And the choice will be yours, whether you go all the way through the section um, and then stop and then go through the review just to make sure you cover the questions that are there. Or you go all the way through the session and come back to the section review and do them whenever you feel you've got a bit more time. Um, as always, one of the suggestions is you will get more from this session if you run it all the way through. If you do wish to stop and review particular sections on the um, session guide that accompanies this, you'll find there are durations. So if you want to focus back, you can see that at six minutes we're covering this topic and 12 minutes we're covering that topic and so on. So if you want to go back and review things in future, particular areas you want to refocus on, you can do that. Okay, so all those bits and pieces are there for you. But um, just to move things on. So just the question to ask yourself, I guess, how often do you set goals? Not just for your clients, but for yourself. And if you are setting goals, how often do you revisit your list? Okay. So these are things to ask. I'm not going to give you any direction on this to begin with. However, what I'd like you to think about is those first two questions. Now, it's important, and we all know that setting goals is important. But often we don't realize how important they are as we continue to move through our life. Things change, things need adjusting, and so on. Um, goals, again, don't have to be boring. Um, you can fine tune them to see your needs, your clients' needs, and so on. But there are many benefits and advantages to having set goals to work towards, which is what we're going to look at today. Setting goals will help you trigger new behaviours, helps guide your focus, and sustain your momentum or your motivation in life. Okay? Goals also help you align your focus and promote a sense of self-mastery. Here's what I'm doing today. Here's what I'm doing this week. And you're kind of taking control of things. But in the end, you can't manage what you don't measure. And one of the things we'll cover is if you can't improve upon something that you don't properly manage. So you're going to have to set yourself little goals, achieve them and see how you're getting on to see if you're going the right way or if you need to adjust them. Setting goals can help you do all of this and more, which is what we're going to cover as we go through the session today. But we're also going to look at how goal setting can lead to greater success and performance. Goals uh, will not only motivate you, but they'll improve your mental health and your level of personal and professional success. You'll probably notice a lot of the most successful people started with goals. Maybe they had a great ultimate goal, but they had lots of little mini goals in between to help get them there. And that's what we're going to really kind of look at today. So, as I said, four sections and the topics we're going to be covering today. Just to begin with, um, getting past limiting beliefs. I'll tell you more about that when we start on it. Um, we're going to talk about setting goals. Um, section three, we're going to look at how to help someone reach a goal. Now, this will be based around clients, but you can also use it and transfer it to help yourself if you need to as well. And then there's a final section at the end, which is titled, What Do You Want to Do? 
which is pretty much geared up towards helping you look at how you, where you want to go and how you want to get there. But again, will be transferable to work with your clients if you so desire. Okay. So we're going to get straight into section one. I'm going to spend some time looking at getting past limiting beliefs. Now, this might be something you've come across before. It might be something you've dealt with yourself or might be something you've discussed with clients. However, I just want to spend a little bit of time looking at this and the importance of it. Okay. So limiting beliefs. Well, here's the thing. Uh, they originate from experiences and events that maybe we've, we've had in the past. Um, subconsciously, we internalize the fear of what happened on that particular day and the insecurity from surrounding it, okay? Now, although these might be subconscious, the beliefs drive behavior and choices in a very subtle but powerful manner, okay? One of the things that you may find is you've been driven in a particular way and you're all up for maybe making, doing a big change or doing a big decision, but something subconsciously will be giving you second thoughts, maybe from a previous experience. Limiting beliefs often hidden and lie below the surface. They're difficult to identify. So that's what we spent just a little bit of time looking at here. Okay. Now, one of the things that can help getting past limiting beliefs is giving yourself or your client a little bit of accountability. And one of the most challenging traits to develop is that accountability to yourself. Okay. Now, what it will give you is your own growth and goals, and it'll help you progress towards anything that you're out to achieve. For your clients that are working with you, they'll become more accountable for their actions and will not only work with you, but it'll ensure they play their part in working towards their own goals. I'm sure you've seen it before. When they're with you for 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it happens to be, then they'll put the extra effort in their work because you ask them to do so. But what do they do when they're away from you? Do they still continue to put that amount of effort in? Do they listen to the message or share, keep the messages in mind that you've been sharing with them or not? But this is where you start to look at accountability. What you need to do with me today is what you need to do in the days leading up to CME is. And people start to put those actions into plans and start working. Okay. The other thing to think about with limiting beliefs is diligence. And this means paying full attention to a specific task and following it through to a successful conclusion, be it a workout, nutritional advice, whatever it happens to be. Um, helping to keep your company's, uh, customers focused will be a massive part towards helping themselves. Okay? So as I said, it's about what they do when they're with you, but also can you give them some support and direction from the time that they're not going to be with you until you see them again. Other things to think about with, uh, with regards to limiting beliefs is self-discipline. Now, this implies you have the power to motivate and control yourself, okay? particular thoughts and actions and so on. Um, if your client's able to regulate their behavior and actions or conduct it for sake of improvement, again, working with you will play a part in success because you've given them direction, you've given them goal, you're giving them some, some do's, maybe some things to, to consider not doing and so on. But it all comes down to self-discipline, getting them past some of those challenges that maybe they've had previously. The other thing that you'll find with getting people past limiting beliefs is helping. Now, this is what we're all about, I guess, is, is helping clients with limiting beliefs, insecurities, and interferes will help them build their own confidence. Thoughts in the past thinking, maybe I can't do five press-ups, all of a sudden you can do 10 straight away. You can see that you've challenged that belief and you've seen, or they've seen they can be able to achieve new things. Shell well-deserved compliments, celebrate the success, support towards planning to reach goals and keep them focused on what they're doing. All little things that you can do. Often limiting beliefs can be linked to fear of failure. So when they tried and not succeeded in the past, or even just the thought of, I can't do it, where maybe just with a little bit of encouragement, the right help, they can. And what we'll often see, you may have experienced this before, the fear of failure is generally far worse than the actual reality. When you actually put your thoughts into motion, things maybe are easier to achieve, or it's more fun or exciting than you imagined. So do bear that in mind. Linked to this again in terms of helping, you can realize and share with your clients that there are no failures, just outcomes and opportunities to learn. So very often you'll start to see things differently. What is great to understand, and this is the thing that you can share with each decision or barrier that people come up against, there are an infinite number of outcomes or paths. So if you choose to do this, this is what could happen. If you choose to do that, this is what might happen. But whatever path you challenge, there's going to be an infinite number of outcomes. So it's about the consequence of doing something and the consequence of not doing something. There's always going to be opportunity, but there's always going to be paths that you can follow. 
if you can think about and share this idea, um, set an intention or an outcome, you can change negative thoughts with a more positive replacement. And what it means is you're more likely to have a better focus and get to where you want to go. It's that whole thing. Replace I can't with I can. It's amazing what people can actually achieve. So again, think about this and remember when it comes to limiting beliefs. They drive our subconscious thoughts, actions, and behaviors. Often we're able to grasp the reasons why we sometimes make the decisions that we do just because there's some kind of underlying trait. Negative beliefs can, about yourself can create the very circumstances that you're hoping to avoid. It's that whole thing, I can't, so you won't be able to. I can, you've got a way better chance of being able to achieve that particular goal or task. So look to see how negative thoughts can be replaced with positive ones. These will reshape how people view their goals and importantly, achieving them. Okay, hoping this makes sense so far. But what I'd like you to do, just as part of our section one review, is I'm going to give you a choice here. You can choose one or both of the questions below, okay, whichever you feel apply to you. So the first thing I'd like to think about is what limiting beliefs do you have, if you have any? Make a list and write down what you could replace those limiting beliefs with. So what would be a more positive outcome, okay? And the second thing is, if you have a client that is concerned about achieving a goal or maybe has some kind of fear of failure there, what could you do to help them? Just taking some of the information from the, the slides we've covered so far. So if you're gonna cover this section one review now, pause it, take some time to answer one or both of those questions and I will see you on the other side. If you're going to continue, then no problem, but if you're going to pause and do the review, here's your opportunity to do it, and I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, welcome back. Let's click on with, uh, with section two, setting goals. So, um, big focus here, and there's things to think about. It's, it's always going to be a few steps towards setting goals. So, for me, the first one is, can you determine your life goals? So ask yourself some important questions about what you want to achieve today, in a year, and in your lifetime, okay? And often, I think I've mentioned it before on a previous session, we underestimate what we can achieve in six to 12 months and overestimate what we can achieve in a week or a month. So give yourself some space to think. But first thing is ask yourself what you'd like to achieve today, in a year, and in your lifetime. Then what you need to do is break the big picture down into smaller, more specific goals or chunking things down. Consider areas of your life you either want to change or that you feel you'd like to develop with time, okay? So these areas might include career, finance, health, uh, could be social life, anything at all, but break those areas down. And what you'll see is you begin to ask yourself questions about what you'd like to achieve in each area and how you'd like to approach it within short-term, medium, and long-term plans. So it could be what do I achieve this week, what do I achieve this month, what do I achieve in a year, or, or set them out even further apart. But the idea is start by looking at those particular areas. Then what you can look at is when you cover those three is write goals for the short-term, makes sense. So now that you kind of know what you want to accomplish in the next few years, make concrete goals for what you're working on now. Give yourself a deadline, but make it reasonable. Okay, don't kind of make it done tomorrow. If it needs a week, give it a week. If you beat that, then fantastic. But be kind and realistic with yourself, okay? Nothing worse than setting yourself a goal that you can't achieve, even knowing that it's gonna to be too tough. So make it achievable. What you find though is writing your goals will make them harder to ignore, making you more accountable for them. We mentioned accountability earlier. This is a way of starting to see that. Make your goals smaller steps that move you towards larger life goals. Now, basically, you need to decide why you're setting this goal for yourself and what you're going to accomplish from it. So some good questions to ask yourself when you're figuring this out are, does it seem worthwhile? Is now the right time for this? And does this match my needs? So again, some questions to ask yourself. And this is really important when you're looking to take steps forward. The other thing, and this is something people forget from time to time, you've got to give yourself a bit of flexibility here. So adjust your goals periodically. You may find yourself that you're setting your ways concerning broad life goals, but take time to reevaluate your smaller ones. Are you accomplishing them according to your time frame? Are they still necessary to keep you on track towards your larger goals? And allow yourself the flexibility to adjust things, okay? If you get stuck, have a look. Can you tweak it? Can you change it? and make sure that it's applicable to what you need to do now, OK? 
Okay? Don't be afraid to do that. Now, again, if you've done some of the other sessions with me before, you would have heard the reference to working smart. Okay. So one of the things to think about is when you are setting your goals, make your goals specific. Okay. When you're setting your goals, they should answer the highly specific questions of who, what, where, when, and why. Now, for each specific goal you make, you should ask yourself why it is a goal and how it helps you towards your life goals. Create measurable goals. Now, in order for you to track your progress, goals should be quantifiable. Okay, so how do I get there and what plans did I follow to, to make sure I do? The third thing is, again, be realistic with your goals. It's important to evaluate your situation honestly and recognize which goals are realistic and which are a little far fetched. Ask yourself if you have all the things you need to complete your goal, the skills, the resources, the time, the knowledge. Now, being realistic is really important. And I'm sure when you've been working with clients before, you've had someone say, well, I need to lose this much weight in two weeks. And you're thinking, well, not quite sure we're going to do that. So how can I realign their goals and think to think about maybe let's lose a bit of weight now and build up to that bigger target, if you like. So, But be realistic with your goals for yourself and also with your clients. Four things to think about is set some priorities. At any given moment, you have a number of goals all in different states of completion. So decide which goals are more important or time sensitive. Okay. And if you find yourself with too many goals, you're going to feel overwhelmed and less likely to accomplish them. So if you've got two or three goals hanging over you, which are the ones that you want to focus on first? Can you get them done and then move on to the next ones? Okay. So you're not trying to do too many things at once. I hear people talk about multitasking. It doesn't always work with goals that you're working towards. Okay. Fifth thing, really importantly, keep track of your progress. Um, different ways you can do it. Now, I've referenced here writing in a journal being a great way to look at both your personal and professional progress. Keep checking in, because that's what these journals are allowed to do, and acknowledge the progress you've made towards a certain goal. Sometimes we forget that where you start on day one is a million miles from where you are maybe on day 91. So keep looking at those little changes, because each smaller step allows you to achieve the goal. But if you go back and review them, you will realize just how far you've come. So keep doing that because it will keep you motivated. Another point to think about is keep assessing your goals. When you do, acknowledge it and allow yourself to celebrate a little bit. Okay, Take the time to assess the goal process from where you started to how you got there. Consider if you're happy with the time frames you've got. Are there more skills you need to develop or set up? And if the goal was reasonable. So keep on assessing. See if you're setting things right. Too easy, too hard. But remember, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Keep tweaking to make sure you're able to stay on track. But also importantly, keep setting your goals. Um, I've seen a lot of people reach a goal and then go, great. But it's important that you've got something else to continue to shoot for. As, as people, as humans, you, you're constantly looking for the next challenge. Once you achieve one, what's the new one going to be? So once you've achieved your goals, even whether it's major life, you want to continue to grow and set new, one, new goals for yourself. So please do bear in mind, it keeps life interesting and it keeps you moving forwards. Don't get too comfortable because you want to keep learning, you want to keep enjoying and you want to keep moving forwards. Okay? So what I'd like you to do, just as part of this section review, take a little bit of time just to answer the following questions. I want to do all of them on, on this occasion. So why is it important to break down larger goals into smaller chunks? So I think about that. Why would you make your goals specific, measurable, realistic? But then what I want you to do is list how this is going to help you and also help your clients. Okay. And what I also want you to do just to finish this section off with this review is what is the importance of reviewing and resetting your goals? So if you're going to carry out this section review, please do pause it now, take a few minutes and I'll see you in just a few minutes on section three. Okay, welcome back to section three. For those of you completed section two, looking forward to moving on now. Um, so this is where we're going to focus a little bit on helping set goals and help your clients reaching your goals. This is something you're probably working on quite a bit already. There might be some things you recognize, but we're just going to make sure we're covering a few of the extra bases to make sure you're completely happy. So let's move straight on. So again, if you've ever had to struggle to achieve a significant goal without support of others, you know how difficult it can be. I guess that's why people come to, to you guys and to um, for, for coaching or to me sometimes for sort of coaching and support as well. Um, 
sometimes you need someone to keep you moving in the right direction. Sometimes you need a little bit of support, and that's what we're going to look at here. Now, the good news is it doesn't have to be that way. There are people there to help you. You, can, you, as a personal trainer, can provide the support that can make the difference to help people strive and achieve a particular goal. Okay? There are a few really important steps we're going to put in place when you work with your clients, and that's what we're going to look at now. Okay? So the first thing we're going to look at is discussing the goals and why they are important. Okay? So when a client is looking to achieve a goal, can you ask how important it is to them? So maybe you want to give them a, a grading reference out of 1 to 10, um, entirely up to you what kind of scale you use. But you can then ask, what does good or achieving that goal look like to them? I'll often ask people, what does life, you know, when life is good, what does that look like to you? Just to give them something to kind of think towards or just a picture in their mind or something to kind of drive them and get them thinking. Okay? What that will do is it'll allow them to set a level of importance to refer back to when they need a strong reference point. So on those days it's been a bit tougher or those days they're getting tempted into you know, missing a workout or whatever it happens to be, this will be the thing that brings them back to why they're doing all this. Why am I having this workout? Why am I putting through myself through this hour of extra activity? Um, but it's the first step in setting goals for people, getting them to think about the goal, but why is it so important? Okay. The second thing is to encourage the person to be as specific as possible about what they want to achieve. Um, we've heard people turn around and say, I'd like to lose some weight. Great. But it's got to be a bit more specific than that. So once the person you're helping has some idea about what they want, you've got to think about how they can make the goal specific for themselves, but also for you to help guide them. The specific goals are, again, they're going to be a lot more motivating and effective than vague ones. You've got something to move towards. So you might find, if you're asking the questions referenced earlier, you know, how much weight loss or when do you want to be able to run that 10K by? So I want to lose this amount of weight in this particular time frame. Or I'm running a 10K event in three months' time. Those kind of things. So when you hear people say, I want to improve my fitness, okay, for what, why, what's the duration, is there any particular sort of reason to it? If you can get people to be specific, it gives them something to work with. It also helps you think about the planning process, sessions, how you can support them over that particular period of time. It also gets you to be able to think about, is it realistic? And do you maybe need to help them adjust that time frame in some way? Okay. So that leads us on to point three, assessing whether the goal is achievable. Sometimes people want things that they're currently maybe a little beyond their reach. Okay. So you may, just in talking to them or, or your experience, have a better sense of whether the goals being set are realistic. If they're not, think about encouraging the goal setter or your client to give this question some thought um, and in turn help them suggest some goals they could reach to get them started. Okay? So what it might mean that you know, losing a stone in six weeks is amended to losing three pounds over the next four months or something along those lines. Um, hopefully I'll check my maths on that. But the idea basically is, can you take a goal that they've got and make it achievable if they've kind of overestimated a little bit? A smaller, more achievable step is gonna get results, but means the ultimate goal is still more likely to succeed. That's what you're working towards. And it'll encourage the goal setter, again, your client, onto achieving the smaller steps to lose that pound a week, for example, towards getting to the stone over the next three months or four months or whatever it happens to be, okay? So, fourth thing is, can you encourage them to prioritize their goals? So trying to pursue too many things at once can prevent people from making much headway on any of them. You know, we hear people about multitasking, but how much do you actually achieve if you've got too many things going on? So can you work with and encourage your client to think about which goals are most important and which ones they're going to start moving towards first? While you're doing this, you can think about open questions um, that allow them to think and talk things through, not just them with themselves, but with you. Okay? Now, what this step will allow you to do is to continue to strengthen your trainer and client relationship. OK, so support and advice that you're given builds trust, builds rapport, allows them to see that the work you're doing with them is not only realistic, but it's helping to achieve their ultimate goal. Okay? So if you can, again, this is an important step, participate in, a, in writing a plan of action. OK, so whether that is something that you, you're putting on an app, whether it's on a piece of paper, whether it's in a journal, entirely up to you. But goals are more easily achieved if they're broken down into smaller steps or chunking down. But if you and your client can use the steps to write a plan for achieving the goals, it's going to make a huge difference. 
Um, if you can assist by discussing and brainstorming the steps, uh, so if you're going to build rapport, you're going to build trust, but you're showing the steps that are necessary to achieve it. So they're taking on some ownership, there's some accountability that we talked about earlier, but it just gives them some help and advice to move in the right direction. Now, if you can review the plan regularly, it allow you both to look at how things are going and give them a chance to talk about how they're feeling, experiencing challenges, uh, things they're enjoying and so on. But it'll also allow you while you're doing this to give further praise for hitting the smaller steps along the way and allow you to work to, together, I guess, to refine the plan or overcome any obstacles to success that you are coming across. This is why it's so important to continue that dialogue and keep looking at those plans. Okay. Again, hoping this is making sense to you. The next part of it is if you are coming up against any roadblocks, then how can you work past these obstacles? So can you brainstorm this? Okay. So as I said, we're talking in the last step about, you know, working towards a goal. There could be obstacles that might make things harder to achieve that goal. So some can be predictable. Others, of course, might not be. But if you're working with your clients to think about things that make the goal harder to reach, then are there ways to move around it? Now, if you can then think about obstacles in advance, it gives you both a chance to think about a way to overcome them. So if there's an issue with time, um, there's an issue with mindset, whatever it happens to be, you can start working towards some of those obstacles. Um, but what it will mean is, rather than being big, difficult barriers to get through, they're challenges. Now, with a challenge, you can work around it. It's rather than just a, a big, solid barrier that seems impossible to get up or get over. So, what you can do is if these barriers are hitting clients, you're going to find a feeling flat and losing motivation. If it's a challenge, you find a way around it. Brilliant. Motivation, sense of achievement. All of a sudden, all those things in their mind telling them they can't, all of a sudden they start to think, well, I can. If I can do this, what else can I achieve? Keeps people moving forwards. Okay. Now, this is where you get to show the difference between working with you or working alone. Okay. So I'm just going to give a couple of slides to this. Um, now, you know, you don't need me to tell you this, but I'm going to do it anyway. The services you provide are fantastic. They're life changing. And it's really important that you remember that. Okay. It's also important to remember that your knowledge and expertise in prescribing the right amount of time, the best ways to work out and the food your clients are encouraged to eat is just part of how you work together. Now, a big factor that you shouldn't overlook is how you give support using your soft skills. Now, the people skills like asking the right questions, listening, taking on board body language cues is also going to help look at how you can continue to build your trainer client relationship and ensure you're an important part of reaching those goals. Demonstrate to them that for them to get to a particular goal in a certain amount of time, they need you. You're going to help them. It's going to make them feel better. And the time spent with you is great value. And it's going to be life changing. And it's going to get them all the places they want to be. Okay. So that's why we're going to spend a few minutes looking at this area. Okay. So interesting one but start with promoting a positive environment okay we're not just talking about the equipment and facilities around them but the extent you're able to help create positive environments to clients to work towards their particular goals as i said it's more than just the workout environment the equipment you use or even the exercise you prescribe it's about removing distractions keeping them focused moving those obstacles and be ready to meet and anticipate their needs okay so there's going to be things that come up. You're going to see times when they're feeling a bit more tired. They're going to see times when maybe they're not in quite the right frame of mind. But you're going to help remove those disruptions. For that hour that they're with you, there's nothing else going on. They get to enjoy it and know that it's doing them good. Okay? Offer encouragement. Now I'd expect, obviously, this is something you're going to do very naturally. But motivation and perseverance are crucial to achieving goals, be they easy or difficult or whatever. But it's all about making sure you keep motivating people. Help your client's motivation by offering encouraging words. And, and when you can, remind your client of the progress they've already made, um, whether they've been able to lift more weight, maybe they've been able to, to, to walk for longer, um, whatever it happens to be, make sure you remind people again about how far they've come or the, the improvement that they've made. It's easy for your clients to forget this, okay? One of the other things it's important to do is keep checking in with your clients as well. Now, if you can do this, it is really and truly one of the most important services you can provide for people trying to achieve a particular goal. And it's, it's, it's about providing even greater accountability. Now, you're going to see your clients regularly anyway, but it's great if you can surprise them with a call, an email, a text, something 
to make sure they're sticking with the plan during the periods they're not seeing you. Okay. Now, generally speaking, people will be chuffed with this simply because it's showing an interest in them outside the hours that you're prescribed to work with them. But one thing to consider is think about regular versus too much. The idea is to ensure your clients feel supported when they're not seeing you, but not bombarded. Okay. So just have a think about how that applies to each client. You might think, do you know what the, you know, um, an email or a call once a week between visits might be good. You might feel maybe it's, it's a, a call and a text, something like that. Entirely up to you. And even ask your client about it. Because the great thing is, if they're working with you, there's an expectation there, and they know you're checking in, much more likely to stick to a particular goal. Okay. Other things you can think about, and to me this is really important, continue to reinforce and celebrate their successes, even the small ones. It just makes them feel great. Um, when you're helping your clients move towards their goals, if you can keep reinforcing their, um, their success, or the completion of the smaller steps, they're going to stay a lot more motivated. If you're reminding clients of the importance of each small step towards their bigger goal, it'll allow them to see each small step as an improvement towards their ultimate goal. And that's what it needs to be. Maybe I'm on step 10 or 60, but you know what? I'm moving forwards. I'm feeling good. I'm making progress. Little rewards in the form of praise and well done can help the person develop positive associations with working towards the goal. We talked about limiting beliefs earlier. Each time there's a bit of a praise or a well done, this workout is helping me overcome an obstacle. It's helping me get past the fear of failure. It's helping me do something I've never done before. So important. Please don't underestimate that. Make sure, as I said, it's to celebrate all the achievements. One of the best forms of reinforcement is recognition. Let your client know you recognize the importance of what's been achieved. They'll feel good, motivated to reach the next step on their journey, and they'll want to continue with you really important point to remember. So just to review this section, what I want you to do is take some time and make a plan or template for how you're going to encourage your clients to set and reach their particular goals. So what I want you to think about here is, are there particular questions that you might ask? Are there specific check-ins that you're going to do? Are there ways that you're going to be able to praise and reward and recognize what they're doing? Just so you've got a little bit of a template to kind of follow to get you started. You can tweak it as you, as you continue through your, um, your career, but just a little something to get you started. So if you're going to do this now, take a moment to pause this recording and um, take a few minutes to kind of put this together. And I will see you in section four in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, so welcome back to section four, and we are now going to focus on you. And the question we're going to ask in this section is, what do you want to do? Why are you doing this? Um, these are some of the things we're going to look at now. And often, when you're working with customers, clients, through coaching and support, it's really important to focus on the goals that your customer has. And sometimes, from time to time, you don't give maybe yourself enough attention or focus. And maybe that can make a big difference to how you help your customers and develop your own career, goals, income. And that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time on now over the next few minutes. What I'm going to start with is setting income goals. Now, one of the things that's really important to do um, is to be realistic, but also to challenge yourself a little. OK, it's about creating that, that balance. You know, I, I want to make sure that what I'm shooting towards is possible but also want to make it a little bit out of my comfort zone so I don't kind of sit back and wait for it to happen. I'm out there, I'm proactive, I'm doing things. So a couple of things you can do to begin with is think about your base income and your target income, okay? So these are where like your base, for example, is where you are right now and your target income is where you want to get to, okay? So the thing with your base income, now generally speaking, this is where you won't go below unless the floor is being pulled from under your feet and circumstances require some desperate action. So you might be like a, a minimum amount you, you're pretty much guaranteed to earn, yeah? That's your base income. But your target number is the number you're gonna focus on when it comes to your income goals. Now, as I said, it's about getting a balance here between being realistic, but challenging. So just to put it into context, this is the number that makes you quiver in fear, but also makes you smile and get excited when you think about hitting it. It's also somewhat achievable in the next three to six months. This is meant to be a number that you truly believe you can hit. There's that balance that I mentioned there, okay? 
So a way to think about this, if you're currently earning around a thousand pound a month, setting a target for 5,000 a month, now that might be possible, but it might also serve to discourage you if you don't hit it, okay? So maybe it's better to be more, a little bit more realistic and take some gentle steps. So try reaching 2,000 or 3,000 instead, um, just so you're taking smaller steps towards that larger goal, okay? As I said, your target should be a number that seems a little bit out of reach, not so far that you can't even see it, but just enough that you can see it, but you can't touch it just yet. It's about motivating yourself to move forwards. That's what you're looking for. When you're kind of giving this some thought, the other things that's got to go into meeting your income goals fall into a few particular areas. Planning, putting the effort in to get there, and being prepared to learn and keep focused. We said right at the very start, when people sometimes have um, a fear of thing, failure and things like that, see things as an opportunity to learn. So if you do something that doesn't quite work to plan, then what did you learn from that experience and what could you change or do differently to improve on it the next time, okay? So, one of the things I want you to think about here is learn to say no, because your time is important. And I'll give you some, some thought on this. Think about this, while you're at work, if it's not making you money, should you be doing it? That's a question only you can answer, okay? So what do you think about it? Now, don't get me wrong, if you choose to do something like taking a new course or talking to customers, it may not have any kind of payoff on that particular day, but it will keep you on the path to future revenue because you've got a new skill, or you talk to five people, they're gonna to convert to a trial and you see it next time and so on. But what the statement at the top means, when it says, if it's not making you money, should you be doing it? What you've got to think about is, do you value your time? Doing things to keep you busy is not the same as being productive. There is a difference. So think carefully about your time and how it reach you, helps you reach your income goals. That's where the planning side of things starts to come in. Plan your time, plan your success, okay? Important when you think about planning, market yourself routinely and consistently. So if you've got 30 or 40 hours a week that you work in, how are you managing that time? If you're just starting out, you might find only 20% of your time is spent delivering sessions. So you need to address the balance to get more clients and bookings. So you may start 20% delivery, 60% marketing, which is trials, contacts, referral, and so, and so on, and 20% maybe is your own time working out. As you get closer or where you want to be, you may find yourself 20% working out, because you want to keep looking after yourself, 60% um, delivery, and 20% marketing trials, contacts, and referrals. So you can see the time switch from there. So it just gets you to think about, how am I using my time? Where am I now, and where do I want to get to? So you can start thinking about the steps in between. There's the planning again, okay? But as I said, it's important to keep making sure that you market yourself. Just because even if you have got a good number of clients or you're moving forwards with that, there is the possibility there are going to be people that drop off for various reasons. They've moved, changed your circumstances, anything can happen. But make sure you're managing that drop off by keeping your contacts up. When you do this and you're making contact people, you're going to allow for a steady stream of work to fill up your hours over the next two weeks. So generally speaking, the work that you do today isn't necessarily going to give you a client straight away tomorrow but it will start making you bookings for two weeks, three weeks time. So what you may find is 10 hours delivery now could move to 20 hours in three weeks time from the work that you're doing now. All the marketing that you're gonna be doing is future focused, okay? So the work that you do in week one will have an impact in week three. The work you do in week three will have an impact in week five, makes sense? So think about that, it's not always instant, but whatever you do now will have an impact in two weeks time. So if you don't do enough, two weeks time, you're still probably not gonna have enough clients or the client numbers that you're looking for. Now, when you're starting off as a new personal trainer, this can be a little bit tougher, but the more experienced you become, the easier you get. But this is all about learning and improving and finding what works for you. But keep focused, keep thinking about your time, and then you will make sure that you get to where you need to be. Okay. Something else to think about when you plan is think about recurring revenue. Now, there's different ways of encouraging recurring revenue through your clients. Now, I'll give you one example here. This could be sort of doing personal training by direct debit, if that suits the client's particular needs. But what it will do for you is ensure a certain number of sessions and a guaranteed level of revenue each month, okay? 
Now, while you're working with your clients, it's the bit that's important to make sure that that revenue is recurring, um, is you keep talking about future sessions and goals. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next, how it's going to transpire over the next three, four weeks, what we're going to be doing in session seven and so on. This will help um, you can keep engaged with them, keep them motivated, but ensure you're providing them with positive reasons to continue working with you. Okay. So setting future goals, assessments, reassessing those goals and helping them to move forward with you is, is what needs to be done. So if you know that you've got four sessions a month with this particular client, think about sessions you're gonna be doing in two months time, three months time, so they can see the benefit of working with you, okay? And keep on addressing those goals. Once they've reached one particular goal, what's the next one? You don't want them to stop working out, you don't want them to stop being healthy, and importantly, you wanna make sure they're working with you, okay? Next thing I want to look at is career goals. Okay, now people do this in different stages in their life, but it doesn't hurt to keep checking on this. Um, whether you're at the starting point of a career, somewhere in between, or even when you're coming towards the end, but it's important to continue to review these things. So there may be times when you're struggling with pro progressing along an upwards path in your career. It happens to most people at some stage, but as you're doing it, it can also be easy to feel suffocated, lacking in direction when it comes to navigating through the direction you wish to take with your career, okay? Now, what can happen for some people is you veer off track. So it's important and it's helpful if you can set up some goals to follow. So here's, where, again, there's that whole starting point. Here's where I am now and where I wanna be in three years time is at this level. It's just about setting little steps in place. Now, what these will do, they'll represent objectives for you, benchmarks and milestones in your career so you can assess Number one, you're heading in the right direction. Number two, is it where you want to keep going? You may change your thoughts. That's why you keep addressing this. But a few things to think about when you're setting your career goals. First of all, I guess it's, it's what is available to you. Now, if you're looking to progress through um, you know, your personal training, then the positions you can consider are personal trainer, senior personal trainer, uh, a regional personal training manager, and a regional director, okay? So it just depends on, do these kind of sit in with, or fit in with where you want to head? So give that a little bit of thought, or does your career follow a slightly different path, or is there something else you want to do, okay? The other things to think about is when you are setting your career goal, there's a few things that you should know about the goals, and you set them on various levels. So first decide what you want to do what you want to accomplish or what you want to be in life. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to think about. Next thing you got to think about is split your larger goal into smaller, more achievable goals or targets to allow you to achieve those. Okay, now what that will do is it will help making accomplishing your goal easier to manage and will help you streamline the process into reaching your ultimate goal. Okay, finally, what you're going to want to do is formulate and develop a proper plan for your goal. So here's where I am now, here's where I am in six months, 12 months, two years, five years, and so on. Okay, so start to think about that. Now, what you will probably find is it's best to establish a step-by-step -step plan that will enable you to start working towards achieving it. Okay, and keep that plan somewhere close to hand, or, or make sure you put a, a plan in your diary to go back and revisit it. If you forget about it, you leave it six months, all of a sudden you can veer off track, miss certain steps, and suddenly start to think, ah, where am I actually going with this? So please make sure you keep any plans that you set close to hand for consistent review. Okay? A few other things to think about when you're setting your career path. What are your strengths or weaknesses? Because there are going to be things that you currently do really well, or maybe there's going to be things that maybe you do some work on. So are there new skills I need to pick up? Are there courses I need to do? Are there people I need to talk to? Things I need to work on. Um, just give that a little bit of thought. Again, give some thought to, you know, what your overall career goal is going to be. Ask yourself some questions like, where do I want to be in a certain amount number of years? This will help you know where your life is going and how it will intersect with your career. There may be other goals that you'll be interested in pursuing with time, but develop a time frame for each goal, okay? Know the steps you will need to take to achieve your goal in a certain amount of time as well. Think about any roadblocks that you may face and think about how you'll overcome them, okay? And be sure to measure the progress of your goal each week, each month. As I said, keep it close to hand. And what it will do is keep you motivated and provide you with a sense of accomplishment, okay? So it's really important to keep on reviewing these various bits and pieces in setting your career goals, okay? Um, it just makes sure that you, you keep yourself on track, you stay focused, and make sure you're heading in the right direction. 
So with your career goals, a couple, just a couple more minutes on this, plan accordingly, okay? This is one of the most important things in your life. And with proper, you know, when you plan your career properly and your goals to achieve that, you're going to get to where you want to be in an efficient way. You're going to enjoy it. You know, that's the thing. You're going to constantly have a direction to follow. And here's the thing. Make sure you plan to do something that you love. Why not enjoy what you do as, as well as generate income? Um, I've been fortunate to do lots of different things during my working life. And it really came to me over a period of years that I loved helping people. So I set a career plan in terms of being able to help with coaching. So what did I need to study? What skills did I need to develop? What other things do I need to get me to where I want to be? Those plans can change, which is why it's important to set that career goal, look at your plan of action, tweak it and change it if it needs to adjust. Okay. Now, one of the other things that's really important when you're thinking about how you work is how is your work-life balance looking? There's plenty of people that I know or work with that are earning ridiculous amounts of money and it's great, but they're not necessarily that happy because they don't get the time to enjoy it. They don't get the time to relax. So how can you create a balance? This is again, something that's worth thinking about. First thing you've got to think about, and I'd always ask is, be clear what work-life balance actually means to you. Does that mean a certain amount of hours? Does it mean a particular amount of days, um, holidays, planning, time with friends? But think about what that, that work-life balance actually means to you, okay? The objective of setting goals is that it gives you a clear focus in comparison to having no direction. This is where I keep coming back to the fact that you take control of your life rather than life controlling you. Okay, there is a subtle difference, that's for sure, and you notice it. Um, goals, as we know, are the fuel that drive your ambition, but this is where work life balance goals really become important. So, what you've got to think about is how would you know if you have more work life or balance? So, is it a certain amount of hours, a certain amount of days you're working, and so on? So, the first thing is figure out the areas you want to see more balance in. So, wherever I've got too much, wherever I'm not good enough, how do I address that? Okay. So some of the examples that you might look at when you're thinking about your work-life balance. Can I give myself more time to do what I want to do or what I love doing? Whether that's social activities, whether it's sports, a hobby, a career, whatever it happens to be. Think about how you can start working towards them. Are there other things that I want to spend more time with my partner, my family or my friends? I'm working 10, 12 hour days, which is great in terms of my balance. But emotionally, I'm not fulfilled. So what can I do to address that? So it gives you start thinking about what am I working towards? Do I actually need to take care of myself? Give myself a chance to get more sleep? Do I need to have fewer commitments? Um, do I want to spend less time working and more time enjoying myself? Um, but also, do I need to take care of myself more and be kind to myself? Often when you're looking after others, you forget sometimes to look after the necessities of yourself, whether it's eating well, resting, taking the exercise you need, whatever it happens to be. Really important though, that you think about what work-life balance looks like to you, okay? A few other things to think about as well. Can you define what success looks like and be as specific as possible when you're trying to look at this balance of things, okay? Why is that important? Every week you can track your progress and celebrate your wins. Now you may not get to your work-life balance within a week. It could take you months, three months, six months, 12 months, but the idea is keep walking to, working towards that ultimate goal. Write your goals down. We talked about it before for other things, but write your own goals down. Now, for some, not having written goals will lead to losing track of what you want to accomplish. You get distracted, you lose your way, um, and everyday life gets in the way of things. You've got no plan. So make sure, write down your goals. The other thing you can find is you quickly forget about the goals that you have achieved, and you move on to another goal of maybe not appreciating your win. So please make sure you take the time to review this. Okay. Now, what that does is it makes you feel like the finishing line keeps getting further away and you feel down on yourself when you don't need to as you're not moving anywhere. Keep checking your dolls off, track how you're doing and keep rewarding yourself. Okay. So a few other bits and pieces. Start small. As I said, you, you may have a plan for work-life balance. It's, it's not going to happen in a week, a month, three months. It could take a lot longer. So start small. How is it going to work? So maybe break it down into... Um, easy things to start with that you can maintain for long periods. So maybe what I do is I finish at six on a Monday or I finish at four on a Wednesday, whatever it happens to be. There's some will be difficult to integrate, but it's a starting point for you. 
Set a goal to work a certain amount of hours or at least twice a week for a couple of weeks just so you get used to the idea or the feeling of it. It might be that you finish on time to get back, to spend some time with friends, family, partners, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then can you, you know, maybe up to three times a week uh, in the next three weeks, allow yourself to ease in and build a routine into making a habit, okay? So if you're thinking about finishing early, maybe you start off with one day a week. And then maybe can you move it to two days a week or three days a week? The idea basically being that you're building in some balance. You're building some time for other things that are important in your life. Okay. Big thing to remember with this, and I, I have to sort of reiterate this to lots of people I'm working with, is keep going. Okay. If you have a setback, that doesn't mean it's a bad plan. It might mean that just something unexpected happens. So what did you learn and how can you improve on it next time? With any change, especially when you're addressing things like work-life balance and new habits, it takes 28 days to form a habit. Realize that you're going to have some slumps. It might make you feel like stopping, but keep on going. Review your reasons for why you're working towards your work-life balance goals. We forget to do that sometimes. It certainly brings you back on point to why you're doing it and where you want to be. And it will help you recharge your motivation. Celebrate your wins. Choose something you really enjoy and do that, okay? Um, a mental pat on the back, a simple reward, or whatever's going to ensure that your efforts for balance are being rewarded will make a difference. Just choose something that makes you feel good. Well done. Even tell yourself it. But just make sure you're celebrating your wins, okay? So to finish things off on this, uh, on this final section, there's a few things I'd like you to do on this review. Now, again, you can pause this. And, and do the review right away, or you can come back to it when we've been through this whole, this whole session. But here's the things I'd like you to do. Take some time to choose one or all of the following that you want to focus on. So it could differ for you and for others, but set a goal for your income over the next 12 months, okay? You might, again, then have to remember to break that down into what it looks like next month, in three months, in six months, to help you get to that 12 month goal, okay? Then maybe think about and set a, a goal for your career in the next three years. Again, set up some milestones in between some smaller achievable goals so you can check and benchmark how you're doing against that grand plan. And then again, if this is appropriate to you, can you set a goal for how your work-life balance needs to look? How it's gonna be, why you're doing it. Set yourself some reasons, get yourself some goals, okay? When you have your goal, work back to the beginning and put in place the, Mini goals or steps you'll put, want to put in place to where you want, get to where you want to be. How you're going to measure your success. So where's my starting point? What am I aiming for and how did it go? And what did I learn? But also make sure how you're going to reward yourself. There might be some things that you love to do, some time you like to spend. Make sure you've got rewards in place to ensure that you keep motivated and give yourself a pat on the back every now and again. Okay. So if you're going to do this now, Pause, and I will see you just towards the end of this session. Thank you. So welcome back. Just a few final tips for you just to, to take away and, uh, and implement some of the other sections we talked through. There's a difference between setting goals and not setting goals. It's the difference between taking charge and control of your life versus having life control you. It's a really important thing to remember. Now, what that can do is to help you in two ways. It will not allow you to be taken off course and you will not stop and you will not give up. They're important things to think about. Now you can take that for yourself and also you can share that with your clients as well that you're working. Okay. Before you start, prepare yourself mentally to meet any obstacles and to find the means and resources to overcome them. So what barriers or, or obstacles are you going to find? What are the ways around it? Make it a challenge so you can get past it and feel motivated by achieving them. Okay. Make a list in advance of all the potential roadblocks you think you may encounter, but then make a contingency for overcoming them. Those two things are so clearly linked. Really important to make sure you consider these tips. There's going to be blows that you never planned for or even expected, but you'll have to deal with them as they arise. You'll be more encouraged to do so when you've been achieving goals along the way. One of the things that people sometimes miss is that you're always going to be faced with problems. What we sometimes want is we, don't, we want a problem-free life. However, the moment you accept there's going to be problems and you have, just have to overcome them, game over. You can move forward. Your whole perspective and perception of life improves because you know things are going to happen. But perhaps you can prepare for it. And if you haven't, you've achieved goals along the way. 
So do you know what? This is going to be no different. I can get past it. The most important thing is be mentally prepared. Face whatever opposition or challenge that may come your way and to be committed to finding solutions to stay on course. As I said, accept the fact there's going to be challenges, there's going to be problems, you'll be able to overcome them. It's when you don't think there's going to be any challenges or problems, life can sometimes feel typical. Big thing, no matter how long it takes or how tough it gets, keep going, no matter what. You can do it. You tell your clients this all the time when they're working out. Make sure you take that on board and reply and reveal that to yourself every now and again as well. Remind yourself of that, okay? So, if there are any extra questions related to this and you want to give me um, a call or email me, you're welcome to do so. You can email me, keith at yoursuccesssolutions.com or if you prefer, you can call me on 07 917 858 060. So, um, once again, hoping that you've enjoyed this particular um, session, hoping you've got plenty from it, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.